On the previous lecture, we talked about some instruments which are used in modern uh, oceanography for the study of the oceans. We talked about oceanography ships, including the Chikiyu and the Joides Revolution. We talked about buoys, satellites, and human diving. Now, when it comes to studying the bottom of the ocean, uh, satellites obviously have their limitations because they're seen from the top. Buoys actually have devices that go down. Um, and humans have these limitations about how deep they can go down. So there, there comes the need for other devices to study the bottom of the oceans. Well, one of these devices was actually developed to detect the submarines or under, the, under the oceans. And we'll talk about submarines in a second, but they are called sonar. Now, whenever you see those movies about the whale, remember, uh, Finding Nemo? We're going to talk whale. Well, when males and dolphins talk, they're, 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 they can also do something called sonar. And they send a high pulse, um, a high frequency sound wave, which hits surfaces, bounces back from these surfaces, and it goes back to them. And they can use that to navigate on the bottom of the ocean, just like bats do in their flight, even though they're, they're, they're blind. So the idea is to use the echo to find out how far objects are. So, for example, if you have a ship that's sitting in the surface uh, and it's mimicking what the dolphins and whales can do, and the ship is sitting in the surface of the, uh, uh, and it sends a, a pulse down to the bottom, as you can see here on the top left, and this pulse will hit the bottom and then rise back to the top. Now, if you know how fast that pulse is, if you know the words, if you know how long it takes, uh, how, how fast this sound wave is traveling, and you can tell that by the frequency and the water properties and things like that. If you know how fast this pulse is traveling, and you know how long it takes for it to go, hit, and come back, you can calculate how far away the, the echo was generated. Because half the time will be to, get, to hit it, and then half the time will be to get back. So if you send a pulse, and then one second later, you receive a, a, an echo, that means that it took half a second for that pulse to hit the object. Now, if it took another object two seconds, to hit the object, it probably means that it's actually deeper. All right, so that means that you can use this to track how far the bottom of the ocean is, or or a location of of a of a of an object, or a shipwreck, or to take topography of the bottom of the ocean. There's multiple applications for this, and then computers analyze the data received and create an actual topography screen of the seabed of the ocean using this method. And you can use it, even use an array. You can see here on the top right how the um, division actually uses two, one emitted by the ship and one emitted by a, 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 a sensor that drags behind the ship to create an array in where the whole thing is scanned twice. And you calculate the echo differences between the two of them as well. So it's a more advanced way to determine the same thing. And by doing these array methods, you can actually calculate the topography of the bottom of the ocean and without ever, ever, ever diving. You can locate things, shipwrecks, buried, buried, buried treasure. And that's what sonar is all about. And it's all about using sound waves to uh, calculate how far it is from the ocean. And I described how to do that in a second. Well, I, I just described how to do that. Now, another way, obviously, of, this, of seeing what's down there is to go down there. But as we know, there's limits to how much far we can dive. So we can use submersibles. Now, submersibles are man-made devices that designed to extend the pressure of the deep ocean to actually study the bottom of the ocean. Now, there are two main... By the way, the words submersible and submarine can be used interchangeably. They mean the same thing. And as you know, submarines have historically been used as, as actual weapons. You see one in there right in the center and doing wartime and some of these are used to deploy missiles or to uh, attack other boats or things like that. So definitely, that's why even the sonars were invented, in order to detect these clandestine underwater crafts. You can even go under the ice, as you see here in this picture. And it, you can travel from Russia to the U.S. really fast by going through the Arctic underneath the ice cap. So it's very interesting. Um, now, there are two main kinds of submersibles. There's bathyscaphs and bathyspheres. Bathyscaphs are the ones that actually look like long fish-like structures like this. You see on the top left corner. And one famous bathyscaph that actually revolutionized 
uh, modern oceanography by studying the bottom of the oceans. It even helped find the Titanic and did a lot of other cool studies. Is the Nautil. It's a, it's a, it's a French bathyscaphe that uh, was used to discover lots of cool stuff about the ocean. And so it, uh, its design is now mimicked in a lot of new uh, versions of, the them, of them. And you see another bathyscaphe right there on the top right corner with the cameras and the devices and everything for them to detect the uh, things that they want to detect. It studied the submarine life and submarine structures and volcanoes and all kinds of research. Now, another one is a bathysphere. Now, the bathysphere is, looks like a sphere and... It, it, it usually lets one or two people go down in, into, the, into the ocean. Now, the major difference between a bathyscaphe and a bathysphere, other than the obviously difference in shape, is the difference in actual operation. The bathyscaphe takes in its own air supply and moves by itself into the ocean, and it doesn't need uh, any sort of um, attachment to a boat in order to operate. It takes its own air supply and sometimes even can create its own air supply out of recycling oxygen from the water. And it can do a lot of things like that on the advanced. Submarines can be there for months without actually ever coming up to the surface. Now the bathysphere is completely reliant on the surface bolt. It is attached to the bolt and maneuvers through the bolt. Although it can do some small maneuvering under there, the majority of the maneuvering is done at the bolt. It's dragged by the bolt and it's fed oxygen-wise and communication-wise by the boat so it's basically attached to the boat and that's the idea of a bathysphere now the advantage of the bathysphere is that its construction in a spherical shape is better to withstand pressure which means it can actually go deeper into the ocean and since it doesn't have to take its own air supply it doesn't have to spend half the ship half the air supply going and half the air supply coming back in which means it can stay there for longer and that's the whole point of the bathysphere but the problem is that the pressure differential is still so high that it does impose limits on passengers being there. Which leads us to the last type of, of, of submersible, which is the robotic submersibles. And you see one there in the top bottom and another one here on, on bottom right. And these are two examples of robotic submarines which can, because they're not designed to take air on the inside, they don't need to, to create an atmosphere because there's no living thing going in there, they can be designed to withstand pressure even more and therefore go even deeper uh, than any human vessel could possibly go and that has allowed us to, 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 to study the deepest trenches of the oceans and open the door for a lot of exploration on the bottom of the oceans as well and these robotic submarines can have robotic arms that collect data and samples and drills and things like that the last oceanography tool that I want to talk about is actually drilling and creating what I call ocean core sediments now, a drill ship like the Chikyu and the Joydis Revolution or all, all other kinds of drill ships will essentially send down a, 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 a metallic wire with a drill in its surface and its tip. And that drill will drill to the thing and suck the dirt up through the tube into the surface and that way take a sample of, of what the ground is like. And by taking this vertical column sample of the... Of the, of the ground, you can study the composition of the rock and the sediments which are there and you create a timeline just like an ice core of the what's happening at the bottom of the ocean. You can And you can study by the, looking at the chemical composition, the physical composition and the changes in, in the sediments, you can actually study the, histor the history of the ocean floor. And since you, all it needs is a drill and a cable and a tube, there's basically no limit to how deep you can go as long as you can make the tube very deep. And so with the procedures like this, we have uh, actually studied all of the bottom of the ocean in, in, high, in a lot of level of detail. Not only to mention that depending on how much cable you need to actually get to the bottom, you know how deep that sample came from. So it's another way to actually measure topography of the bottom of the ocean. It's very interesting. So we talked about several tools used by modern oceanographers to study to study the ocean. We talk about ships, buoys, satellites, diving, sonar, submersibles, and ocean core sediments. And that is where we are now in the 21st century study of oceanography. And we'll start talking about that on, on the next video where we actually talk about the geography of the ocean floor or ocean topography and all the features that they have. I'll see you then.